Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. Today's video is going to be a junior doctor hacks video on how to survive the war round. This video is mainly aimed at all the junior doctors, especially the new FI1 starting in August. For those of you guys who are new to my channel, I am Lavanya and I'm currently working as a medical registrar in the UK. The first hack is have a tea meeting. It is always a good idea to have a tea meeting before the ward round. Some consultants prefer to do a business round. Others like to do a more lengthy teaching round. If it is a busy day and you have 30 to 40 patients to see, a business round is definitely much more efficient. Basically, a business round is very task oriented. If there are more than two doctors present, the consultant might ask you to split up and prepare the notes for the next patient while the consultant sees the first patient with the other junior doctor. In a teaching round, the consultant will want all the doctors present during the round. You will also get a chance to learn and ask questions about each case, so it is good in a way. The next hack is splitting the ward round. Again, if you have a good team of doctors, it is definitely a good idea to split the ward round. For example, one junior doctor will go with the consultant and see the patient in base A and B, and another junior doctor will go with the registrar to see the patients in base C and D. This is normally the usual setting in most wards, and it definitely halves the time of the ward round compared to one consultant or registrar seeing all the 30 patients. The next hack is board round. At the start of every day, it is always a good idea to have a mini board round with all the doctors and consultants before the actual board round. This way, you get a chance to catch up on what happened overnight with the patients and it is also a good way to set the task for the day. For example, patient A needs an MMSE done today, patient B needs a CT scan, by doing this at the start of the day, the war drawn will be more focused and goal orientated. My consultant told me this once, there is basically three things that you need to answer for all your patients. Why am I in hospital? What is going to happen to me today? And when can I go home? These are the three most important questions that all patients will want to know. So if you're able to answer those questions, it will definitely help the war drawn go more swiftly. The next hack is noting jobs as you go along. There is honestly no time to check every single patient's folder for the jobs from the ward round. So as you go along, it is really useful to write down the jobs on a jobs list or a jobs book. If you have worked in a ward, you know how important a jobs book is. Some wards prefer to have a jobs list every day. Personally, I am not a fan of jobs lists because a piece of paper can easily go missing. And plus, by having a jobs book, you get to see what jobs were done for the patient yesterday and you can also write future jobs for the next day. So having a jobs book is definitely more helpful, especially if you have different doctors working on different days. The next hack is doing jobs as you go along. It is definitely more efficient to do the jobs as you go along during the ward round, but there is definitely pros and cons to this one. The bottom line is you should not do a job while you are distracted and ward rounds can be distracting, especially when you're trying to do so many things at once. However, if you are a seasoned doctor and well experienced, you can easily do the jobs as you go along, especially simple things like changing a medication on a drug chart, requesting an x-ray or a scan. Some consultants will even give you time to do the jobs as you go along so that it is all done and you don't have to worry about it later. The next hack is preparing the notes. If you are early or have some time before the ward round, it is always a good idea to prep the notes. Prepping the notes is more than just writing the observations down. It is more about gathering all the information necessary for the patient and also thinking ahead of what the consultant might ask you about the patient. So write down information like recent blood tests, urine output if they have AKI, recent blood gases if they are on BiPAP, daily weight loss if they have heart failure, stool chart if you're on Jerry's, MSU results or any micro results from the lab that might be relevant. 
if you have noted all this information, trust me, your consultant or registrar will very much appreciate it. It certainly saves time because looking up all this information during the ward round can take up significant amount of time. The next hack is prioritizing jobs. This is honestly a skill that all junior doctors should have. You will eventually get to know which jobs needs to be done first and which can wait. Every doctor develops their own way of doing things and over time you will develop a way of prioritizing jobs that works for you. Personally, I tend to do the most urgent jobs first. So if there is a sick patient that needs X, Y and Z, that will be my first priority. After that, I tend to do all the semi-urgent jobs like TTOs and discharge summaries for patients going home that day. Then I try to send off all the necessary bloods that might have been missed by the phlebotomist because the quicker you do the bloods and send it to the lab, the quicker you're going to get the results, hopefully before the end of the day. Honestly, it is better to send off the bloods as early as possible because there are so many decisions that depend on blood results and sometimes a normal blood test can generate a lot more jobs like prescribing fluids to correct electrolytes, discussing with micro if your patient labs are not improving on the current antibiotic regime. So it is a good idea to have the blood results back as early as possible, preferably before lunch. After that, I tend to do all the requests. These are requests for x-rays, scans and echoes. Again, because it is time dependent, the quicker you get the request done, the quicker the patient will be able to have those investigations done. After sorting all of that, I tend to do all the non-urgent referrals, like putting a request for a gastro consult, a renal consult, or a vascular consult. Once that is done, I spend the rest of the day doing non-urgent TTOs and discharge summaries. The last hack is food. Working on an acute ward can be very busy and stressful. So many times I have gone through the whole day without having a break or anything to eat. I am sure many of my junior doctor colleagues can relate to this one, but you can't continue living like that because trust me, you will burn out. Ideally, you should take at least 30 minutes to have lunch, but if you can't, because there will be those days, whenever you get a chance to sit down, make sure you have something to eat or drink. Even if you're sitting down to write a discharge summary or to do a referral, have something to eat. Not ideal, but you need the energy. That is all for my video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any other hacks, please share them in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more videos and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!